Welcome back viewers. This is James Com. And we're coming to you from the Museum of Modern Art. And it's September 13th, 2011. And we have got a really special treat for you today. We're going to run in and take a look at William de Kooning retrospective. Well, they're billing this as the first complete retrospective of the career of William de Kooning. And I think the press release stated that they had over 200 pieces in this show going back to his day studying at the Academy. It was in Rotterdam. Let's take a quick sweep around here at the entrance. Well, I think this is the oldest piece in the show. It's called Still Life with Bull, 1921. And you can see that uh, de Kooning was quite a talented uh, technician. And I guess he was very successful as a student and was working also in commercial art there. Oh, it's still life, 1927. And he's got his surrealistic eggs in there. There's a hint of Matisse. Well, they say that he moved to New York, I guess, in the mid-20s. What actually happened was that uh, he stowed away on a ship and uh, snuck ashore here in New York and I believe was initially living in Hoboken and working as a house painter. Untitled 1928. And I've heard that uh, he was still worried about not being allowed to re enter the United States even into the mid 60s when he went back for a major retrospective in Holland. It's called Untitled The Cow Jumps Over the Moon. This is actually very interesting as we progress along here. You can see how he's gone from uh, fairly realistic work to Kind of surreal abstraction, but I like this untitled matchbook. Now, Kooning was hanging around with a pretty interesting group of people there. I think his mentor was Marshall Gorky. Well, this is a wonderful little abstract painting, great color. A little pink landscape. Untitled 1945. And I think it was Gorky that uh, kind of influenced him, pushed him towards the biomorphic surrealism themes that a lot of the early work goes into. This is a very famous piece. This is called The Wave. I like the curves here. This almost makes me think of an Iams chair or something. It's called Summer Couch. Well, we've got a suite of great little paintings here that uh, the wall label identifies as some of de Kooning's first attempts at abstraction. Right after he got through working for the WPA program, and I think it's very obvious here the influence of Arshul Gorky. Oh, now we've got a great suite of his early female figure studies. This is one of my favorites. This is Pink Angel from 1945. You know, a lot of people have talked over the years about what a great draftsman de Kooning was, but uh, he's also a great Colorist. It's 
this pink lady. And one of the things I love is the way you can see how much he's worked on and changed and uh, erased some of these areas like that face. The pedometi is wonderful. This is Woman 1942. You know, the colors actually look better on my video monitor than they do in real life. Seated woman. We'll take a look at some of the studies that he did on for these paintings. Seated Woman 1943. And that's probably about six by eight inches. Oh, this is one of his most famous drawings. This is a portrait of Elaine. And I think that he might have been looking at some of Picasso's neoclassical drawings where Picasso was trying to get the same quality that Engs had. self-portrait with imaginary brother. This is also a very famous drawing and I think kind of relates to Gorky's portrait, self-portrait with his mother. Oh, I've never seen this one before. This is nice. It's this figure. This is oil on masonite. Those red lines are nice, and I like the way that he's kind of cropped the image and left this kind of ragged underpainting on the back. <laughs> Jason Copeland and Jed Pearl. Well, now we're in the 1946 to 1949 gallery, and this is probably the area where you get a chance to See de Kooning really produced his first unique, mature work. Oh gosh, look at that. We got a whole bunch of his uh, black and white enamels. This is what his first show at the uh, was Charles Egan Gallery was composed of. I believe this is all house painting enamel. They're calling this the breakthrough years. Kind of run through here because there are over 200 pieces in the show. This is titled Secretary. Oil and charcoal on paper mounted on fiberboard. Night. I think a lot of these were painted either on paper or on board, and he was using house paint because he was so broke that he couldn't afford good oils and canvas. Study for stenographer. And you can see how there's still kind of an echo of Picasso and maybe some of the surrealists like Miro, maybe a little dorky. It's called Moraine. It's a nice piece. This is called Mailbox. And let's see, this is probably about 24 by 32, something like that. Marked in about 10 minutes. Right okay, up. thank you. It's titled Abstraction 1948. Actually, this is more of a yellow ochre. I was looking in the monitor. It looks a little lemony, but this one where he's broken away from his black and white and he's put in some color. Well, there's Jerry Saltz. You know, I think de Kooning also had a great talent as a collagist. This is ink on paper. This 
is wonderful. I've uh, I've seen one or two of these black and white pieces individually, but it's really great to see a whole whole selection of these, which probably is a lot like his exhibition. It was his first show, and he was about 44 years old. That's great. And uh, although de Kooning had a great downtown reputation as an artist and someone that was really serious, it was very hard for him to get a show. And uh, Clement Greenberg even praised him of Black Untitled for this particular work. I love his whipped lines. I think most of these are oil on composition board. It's titled Black Friday. like a uh, thumbnail maybe on a palette. Some little shots of color in the corner are nice. 